Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friday, the 28th of January, 2022, of the third week in Ordinary Time, is the Memorial of St. Thomas Aquinas. Our Daily Prayer Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit and transform me into the Christ-like holiness you desire. Increase my zeal for your kingdom and instill in me a holy desire to live for your greater glory. Amen. Introduction to the Liturgy of the Word But first, more on St. Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas, the great Dominican teacher, achieved a masterful presentation of sacred doctrine in his Summa Theologia and other works. At the request of Pope Urban IV, he created liturgical texts for the Feast of Corpus Christi, composing the majestic Eucharistic hymn Pange lingua gloriasi. Toward the end of Thomas's life, a sacristan in the church of St. Nicholas in Naples witnessed a mysterious exchange between Christ and Thomas praying before a crucifix. You have spoken well of me, Thomas. What is your reward to be? Thomas replied, Nothing but yourself, Lord. Thomas died in 1274 and was declared a doctor of the church in 1567. You have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah to be your wife. A reading from the second book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 1. At the turn of the year, when kings go out on campaign, David sent out Joab, along with his officers and the army of Israel, and they ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. David, however, remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David arose from his siesta and strolled about on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing who was very beautiful. David had inquiries made about the woman and was told, She is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, and wife of Joab's armor-bearer Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers and took her. When she came to him, he had relations with her. She then returned to her house, but the woman had conceived and sent the information to David, I am with child. Therefore David sent a message to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. So Joab sent Uriah to David. When he came, David questioned him about Joab, the soldiers and how the war was going. And Uriah answered, That all was well. David then said to Uriah, Go down to your house and bathe your feet. Uriah left the palace, and a portion was sent out after him from the king's table. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the royal palace with the other officers of his lord, and did not go down to his own house. David was told that Uriah had not gone home. On the following day, David summoned him, and he ate and drank with David, who made him drunk. But in the evening Uriah went out to sleep on his bed among his lord's servants, and did not go down to his home. The next morning David wrote a letter to Joab which he sent by Uriah. In it he directed, Place Uriah up front where the fighting is fierce. Then pull back and leave him to be struck down. So while Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew the defenders were strong. 
When the men of the city made a sortie against Joab, some officers of David's army fell, and among them Uriah the Hittite died. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 51 verse 3 Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin, cleanse me. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. I have done such evil in your sight that you are just in your sentence, blameless when you condemned. True, I was born guilty, a sinner, even as my mother conceived me. Let me hear the sounds of joy and gladness. The bones you have crushed shall rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all my guilt. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A man scatters seed on the land and would sleep and the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verse 26. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields a sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our Meditation At the turn of the year when kings go out on campaign. Today's first reading tells the story of David and Bathsheba. You're probably familiar with it. David spies Bathsheba bathing and begins to lust after her. He has her brought to him, and their encounter results in Bathsheba becoming pregnant. To hide his guilt, David conspires to have her husband killed so that he could take her as one of his many wives. But how did it all start? The first verse of the reading tells us something interesting. It was the turn of the year, the time when kings would go out on campaign with their armies. All the kings went, every year. But where was David? At home, taking siestas and strolling about on the roof of the palace, 2 Samuel 11.2. He wasn't leading his army, he was having a vacation. 
And that's when he discovered the beautiful Bathsheba. Now vacations aren't bad, but David's downward spiral began because he wasn't doing what he should have been doing in the first place. Unfaithfulness to his duties led to even more unfaithfulness, and that can happen to us too. God in his grace calls us and gives us certain structures and rhythms to our lives that are meant to help us grow in virtue. We have our prayer times, mass, and even the demands of our jobs or vocations. There's a kind of protection in staying faithful to these guardrails. David might very well have become bored with his springtime forays onto the battlefield every year, even though he protected the people God had given him to lead. We too might think we're just doing our same old daily routines. We might wonder how important are they anyway? But faithfulness protects us. God uses even our ordinary habits to lift us up and shelter us from temptation. Are you being faithful to what God is calling you to do? Or are you getting bored and wandering off? You can find joy even in your mundane tasks or repetitive duties because God is there. So try to approach each routine task with a desire to please God. He will bless your faithfulness and pour out His grace to draw you closer to Him. Lord, help me to follow you faithfully. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May His peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, I'm Shirley, residential realtor for many years. As a professional, I welcome and encourage you to contact me whether you are buying or selling a home. Or, if you know like-minded people, like yourself, that you want me to help guide through this overwhelming process. Whether in the Dallas Metroplex or across the country, I'd love to assist in your real estate needs. Click the link in the description below to land on my website for a plethora of real estate information. Thank you and blessings upon you and yours.